Over half a century ago, a deadly aerial contest was fought between the Royal Air Force and the invading German Luftwaffe in the skies over England. The RAF's victory in the Battle of Britain changed the course of the Second World War. The air defense units of today's RAF are the inheritors of this tradition, protecting the island of Great Britain against airborne threats. Located in the rolling countryside of northern Yorkshire, RAF Leeming is part of the 1118 group of the RAF Strike Command. During the Battle of Britain in 1940, the RAF was divided into Fighter Command and Bomber Command. In 1968, both elements joined to form Strike Command. Strike Command has 13 squadrons, including some that fly the Harrier Jump Jet and the Tornado Strike Fighter. 1118 Group specializes in the aerial protection of the United Kingdom and includes the Air Defense Wing at RAF Leeming. The group is also responsible for maritime defense, coordinating its actions with the Royal Navy's air support at the outset of uh, the Battle of Britain, we were flying uh, Boston's and Bow fighters in the night intruder role, and the squadron fairly quickly converted to Mosquitoes, and then took over a night fighter and night intruder role. Uh, with that aircraft, the squadron deployed on night. As in the days of the Battle of Britain and throughout the Cold War, at 25 Squadron, crews are on ready alert around the clock, waiting for the scramble alarm to intercept an intruding aircraft. During peacetime, it's referred to as Quick Reaction Alert, or QRA. A typical peacetime mission might well be a QRA launch. QRA is held by the Air Force 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Being visually identified as whatever, it might be a civilian airliner that's lost, or perhaps, heaven forbid, uh, the real thing, uh, an enemy aircraft uh, with, uh, with intent uh, to prosecute an attack. Having conferred uh, with the superior authority, uh, if it were, say, an airliner that needed assistance, then our job would definitely then involve shepherding the aircraft to an airport or redirecting it on its route. Uh, clearly, in the other eventuality, we might find ourselves having made an intercept, identifying the aircraft, and perhaps if we were at state of war at that point, um, being ordered to make an engagement. With advances in aviation technology over the past half century, Britain's interceptor aircraft have experienced dramatic changes. The post-war years saw the steady improvement of fighter radar and jet technology. Aircraft such as the Javelin marked the next stage in interceptor design, capable of operations day and night at supersonic speeds. By the 1960s, missiles became the main arm attack. Its modification into an interceptor involved replacing its ground attack radar with a Fox Hunter radar, designed specifically for air intercept missions. 
The tornado surpasses its historical antecedent, the Spitfire, on many aspects. The Spitfire was a fraction of the size of a tornado, with a top speed of 355 miles per hour. The supersonic tornado has a top speed of nearly 1,000 miles per hour. The Spitfire had a combat radius of about 150 miles, compared to the tornado's combat radius of well over 750 miles. Armed with eight 30 caliber guns, the Spitfire's attack range was only a few hundred feet. Whereas the tornado can attack targets up to 30 miles away with its long range missiles. The Spitfire was effective only in clear daylight, while the tornado can operate effectively day or night in nearly all weather conditions. With its greater complexity, the management of the tornado requires two crewmen, a pilot and a navigator. We have two crew members. We have a pilot obviously in the front seat and the navigator in the back seat. The uh, difference in, in jobs is not as clearly defined as it used to be. It's more of a, a crew cooperation aircraft. Obviously the pilot's responsible for flying the aircraft, getting it safely off the ground wherever we're operating. The description is better as the uh, American weapon system operator, if you will. Uh, certainly the navigator has primary responsibility for the safe navigation of the fighter. However, I would say upwards of 95% of these responsibilities revolve around uh, employing the weapon system, ensuring that the intercept geometry is just right to make the intercept, and making sure that the ordnance is delivered accurately uh, and at the right point. The reason that the backseater is heavily involved uh, revolves essentially around the way in which the Tornado F3 has been developed as a weapon system. It would be virtually impossible for the aircraft to function with just a pilot, uh, equivalently, without the controls, even the navigator in isolation could not run an intercept to uh, either weapons launch or identification by himself. So one relies upon the other, and certainly the generation of single-seat fighter pilots in the Air Force has perhaps now disappeared with the demise of the Lightning. The Tornado F-3s are armed with a 27mm Mauser cannon, Sidewinder missiles, and Skyflash supersonic mid-range missiles. One of the Skyflash's greatest strengths is its versatility. The latest version of this missile has a solid fuel rocket engine. Although the Skyflash can be fired at shorter ranges, Sidewinder missiles are typically used by the Tornadoes for close-range engagements. The primary weapon is probably going to be the, uh, the Skyflash. That's a radar-guided missile, you probably call it a beam, beam riding weapon, if you like. Um, the, the parent uh, aircraft radar illuminates the target and bounces back a certain amount of uh, reflected energy, which the missile underneath the airplane can recognize, and it will follow that beam right down to, uh, to the point of impact and uh, destroy the target that way. It's, um, it's a slightly longer range missile than the uh, Sidewinder, which is the alternative. The Sidewinder is carried under the wings. The Sidewinder is uh, probably more commonly referred to as a dogfight missile, slightly shorter range. The difference is it, uh, it actually requ requires thermal energy to, uh, to target on. So instead of having a beam to ride down, it actually follows uh, a thermal source. The most obvious thing on an aeroplane, obviously, uh, is a jet exhaust, and basically that's what we try and aim it at. In spite of recent changes in aeroplane technology, the essential element of aerial combat, the air crew, has not changed much since the Battle of Britain. I don't think the pilots are much different. The average age of my uh, junior officer pilots is around about 22. Uh, perhaps actually a couple of years older than some of the pilots who fought in the Battle of Britain. But uh, to my mind, and many of these ex-Battle of Britain aces are now honorary members of the squadron, having fought with us, uh, there's a large similarity. I mean, they, have, they share a similar fully all-weather capable, 